Okay, so the question here says part of the graph of the quadratic function is x squared plus bx plus c. And so we know any quadratic function will always have a square, or it could be a minus x square, uh, an x and a number. It says b and c, c are elements of z, and we know z is the word for integer, um, which is just a positive or negative whole number. Um, we're given this graph here, it's an x squared graph, and we're given two points on it. We're given p is the point minus 3, 9, minus 9, along as far as minus 3, down as far as minus 9, and q along as far as 2, down as far as minus 4. And we're asked a series of questions on this graph. The first one is use the points given to form two equations in b and c. Well, we don't know what this equation is. We definitely know, though, however, that it forms an x squared plus bx plus c. And we're told that this is the line. So y equals the line here. We are given some pieces of information. And from the graph, I can see that the point minus 3 minus 9 is on the graph. So if it's on the graph, I know that when I sub this in, minus 3, minus 9, it should work out. So that's what we're going to do first of all. Um, I'm going to call this my x-coordinate and this is my y-coordinate. So what will I say? I'll say, well, minus 9 equals minus 3 to be squared plus b times minus 3 plus c. And I'm going to do a little bit of working out on that. So that's going to give me minus 9 equals minus 3 squared is going to be 9 uh, minus 3b plus c. So I'm going to do my letters to one side, numbers to the other. Um, so I'm going to do minus 9 here, minus 9 here. That's going to cancel. I'm going to get minus 18 equals minus 3b plus c. And then I can just fix that up a little bit and I can get uh, minus 3b plus c equals minus 18. Uh, just have my letters on one side, numbers on the other. Okay, I'm going to do the exact same thing with the second point. I'm told that this is the curve, and the curve is called y equals x squared plus bx plus c. On that curve, I can see this point is on it, which means when I substitute it in, it should work perfectly. So I can then label this one x and this one y, and it should be minus 4 is equal to minus 2 to be squared plus minus, no sorry, that should just be 2, 2 to be squared, um, plus 2, b times 2, apologies, getting all slow here, so it should be b times 2 plus c, and again, let's say, let's get rid of that, okay, it's going to solve that, so it's going to give me minus 4 equals 4 plus 2b plus c, I'm going to do minus 4 here, minus 4 here, they're going to cancel, and my second equation here will be minus 8, equals 2b plus c, and just to rearrange it, I'll have 2b plus c equals minus 8. Okay, so now you can see here, uh, in this equation, I don't know b and I don't know c, and in this equation, I don't know b and I don't know c. So whenever I have equations where I don't know two things, hopefully you're saying it with me now, what do we need to do? Because the next part of this question says, solve. Hopefully you're saying the word with me now, it is simultaneous equations, well done. So minus 3b plus c equals minus 18 is my first equation, and 2b plus c equals minus 8 is my second equation. So let's work on down and make sure we can finish these correctly. So um, I'm going to change, I multiply the top line by minus 1, which gives me 9b minus c equals plus 18. And the bottom I have 2b plus c equals minus 8. So they're going to cancel. And I don't know where I got minus 9b there. It should be 3b. So then it's going to give me 3b uh, plus 2b is 5b equals 10. Happy days. I think I've done it right. So then b is equal to 2. Second step is I substitute back in. So it's minus 3b plus c equals minus 18. And that's going to be minus 3 times 2 plus c equals minus 18, minus 6 plus c equals minus 18, c is equal to minus 12. All right, 
So we go back into the question that said, number one, use the points given to form two equations. I've done that. Number two, solve the new equations. Write down the coordinates of the point where it cuts the y axis that should actually be there so right well i'm going to go back to the actual graph the actual graph originally was called x squared plus bx plus c and that's the curve i now know that it's going to be x squared plus 2b minus 12 and i got that from finding my b and c and then you look and you say well this is your coordinate graph and you know the number at the end, always, whether it's a straight line graph, an x squared graph, a minus x squared graph, or a cubic graph, is always where it hits the y-axis. So then you can go back and you can say to yourself, well, then this must be the point 0, minus 12. Along as far as 0, down as far as minus 12. All right. And then the last bit. It says find where the curve crosses the x-axis. So we want to find out what this point here is. Um, okay. So when it crosses the x-axis, something should be going through your minds. And hopefully you know that when anything touches the x-axis, so if it touches it here, or if it touches it here, or if it touches it here, that might be one, that might be two, that might be minus one. When it crosses the x-axis, your y, this is the point along as far as one, up as far as zero. So that's the point one, zero. This is the point two, zero. This is the point minus one, zero. And hopefully you're realizing that every time it crosses the x-axis, your y, so here's x, y, x, y, x, y, your y is always equal to zero. So whenever you're asked in a question like this, where does it cut the y-axis, you just let y equal 0. So I'm going to go back here and now instead of writing y is equal to x squared plus 2b minus And that should actually be 2x, shouldn't it? So instead of writing y is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 12, I'm now going to let y equal 0, which now becomes 0 equals x squared plus 2x minus 12. And if I give you that single sum here you probably would rewrite it like this x squared plus 2x minus 12 and if i asked you to solve me for me for that you would say to me miss that's a quadratic so we would do our back-to-back -back brackets and so i have an x in one bracket and x in the other um we have four times three we have six times two and we're looking to get 2x here we have 12 times one and I'm looking, I'm thinking, oh gosh, none of these are working. Um, I'm just going to go back and make sure I've read the question properly. And the question here says, find the point where the curve crosses the x-axis. Give your answer to one decimal place. Oh, perfect. One decimal place. That is even in telling me here that to solve this, if I can't do it by a quadratic, um, I could do it by the minus b formula. So, minus b formula is minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a and i'm saying my a, a is what's in front of the x squared which in this case is just a one my b is equal to two and my c is equal to minus 12. i substitute that in so i'm going to get minus two plus or minus the square root of two to be squared minus four times one times minus 12 all over two times one. I'm gonna work all that down, okay? I'm not going to do that for you. Hopefully you're able to finish that off. And then whatever answer you get, um, you're going to say get two answers. You're going to get a positive answer, and then you might get a negative answer. So which one are you going to use? Uh, will you go back to your diagram again, and we can see that um, it will hit the x-axis at, two places won't it and that's that and that's the reality so whatever two answers you get it'll be the point along as far as whatever this one is and zero and along as far as this and zero and there are your two points okay so that is activity four question the first question on activity four you're to take down the notes on this and then do the next two parts on activity four and i'll see everybody tomorrow